Hello, I want to welcome you to the Meacham Conversations, and today we have Bridget Bates, who's a UTC graduate, and she's with us here at the Meacham. Uh, would you like to start by reading a poem? Sure. Um, so I'm going to read one of the poems from my, my book, What is Not Missing is Light, which is my first collection of poetry that came out last November. Um, and they're all sort of, all the poems in this book are untitled prose poems, so I'll just, I'll just read one. In a hotel in northern Italy, it is peacetime. But fighter jets fly over at night, rattling the picture frames above the beds. For a place that endures aftershocks, why do they persist in hanging glass where they sleep? Dogs howl with each boom. First, an army destroys a temple. The limbs of men and statues are demolished. Their names disappear. The soldiers become a hero, then a number, then a statue is re-erected to pay homage to all the fallen. A parade drums by. Fireworks deafen our heads if we have them. As if a city could be illuminated and destroyed in the same instant. As if a statue needs to be rescued from ruins to become historical. As if we need to be survivors in order to be free. Oh, thank you. Uh, how did, what was the origin of that? Um, well, I think, like, like many of the poems in this book, you know, I, which is maybe common for someone's first book, it feels like a summary of your life <laughs> in a yeah. very slim volume. Sure. And so I think it was a combination of travels, of things that I had read, of art, of, of a lot of ideas that were kind of floating around and sort of all came together into this, to these, this series of poems. Um, you know, I think a couple things. Um, first of all, one of the one of the books that I was sort of reading at the time that really sort of changed my way of thinking about a lot of things was um, a collection of, of essays from Zbigniew Herbert, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Polish poet who who wrote a lot about his travels, and um, he has some really beautiful essays about kind of going through a lot of Greece and looking at the ruins in Greece. And one thing that he said that really struck me was um, we, we go to these sites of ruins and we celebrate, we, we're amazed by, wow, these ruins have lasted. And really, we should be mourning the loss of, like, why are they ruins? Because man has done something to these, you know, beautiful, you know, sites and sanctuaries and it's really war and something that has destructed them and that the fact that they are they are ruins and so that kind of turned the idea of uh you know celebrating these fragments and statues and ruins and you know i, I think that that sort of changed my way a lot of these poems are looking at art and looking at fragment fragments of art that have survived time and the fact that you know here we are man is preserving them in museums but yet man is the reason that they're half bodies and half you know half ruins um so I think that, that that theme sort of goes through a lot of the poems and sort of following on some of the idea of a travel log and notes from travels, this, the poem sort of starts with in a hotel in Northern Italy. And I, that reference sort of, I think it comes from one of, when I was a student of yours at UTC, we went, you know, every spring we did these trips to Slovenia and to different places for writers conferences. And I remember we were staying in, Northern Italy at one point. And yeah, in Tuscany actually, in, in Traquanda. Yeah, and we heard, we heard these fighter jets. It was, it was sort of post. It was during the Yugoslav War. Yeah, it was right after like the, you know, the Balkans and there were a lot of NATO, I think, missions going mm -hmm. over. And it was so odd to be in this sort of idyllic place that, that in Italy that had not actually seen any kind of fighting in decades and yet there's fighter jets. <laughs> it's hard to get that doubleness uh, in, and you do that in that poem. I mean, it's a, it's a very calm, um, almost analytic tone mm -hmm. that has a kind of this emotional tug underneath it. Um, on the one hand, yeah, you can mention parades and all this kind of stuff, but the other hand, just something as particular as just, oh, the glass could fall yeah. uh, during the, this kind of shattering, as opposed to buildings falling, say, in Sarajevo. Yeah. Well, and it's, I think it's sort of this tension that you see, you know, in your daily life, in your travel, this sort of tension between war and peace and how, you know, 
we have the luxury of living in peace and not a very distant sense of war in America. Um, I think, you know, another, <laughs> a random influence of this poem too was the fact that I live in California now and um, I don't hang glass above my bed because we have earthquakes. Right. <laughs> and so this idea of like how all the worlds are so fragile and yet, you know, we have a, we have a very odd sense of safety and, and detachment from history and from these other ruins, even though in the everyday we sort of live with these practicalities of, oh, an earthquake could hit. I shouldn't have glass hanging above my, my head. <laughs> so does travel still influence your writing? I mean, places you've been, yeah. people you've met? Yeah, I think, you know, over the years, just, it is sort of almost this, you know, I feel like often when I'm traveling, I'm just always keeping a notebook. And when I come back from trips, I have, you know, lots of photographs, lots of notebooks and just things. And I've never been a writer that just sort of sits down and has that aha moment that I, I want to write about this one thing, but it's like over the years, these memories are kind of, you know, accumulate. Yeah, yeah, are kind of subconscious and they sort of eventually come out on the page. And what starts, what's the actual catalyst that starts the poem? Um, it's just a line or an image? It's, that... it's usually an image or a line and that just sparks something and it does feel like it opens up this sort of door to my door to my past that, you know, the memories start to kind of unfold. Well, your travels have also um, included meeting some um, writers who I think have been influential. I mean, uh, I know you've met Tomas Shalaman and um, he has a kind of aphoristic style, mm -hmm. which uh, I can see, like even in the poem you read, because there were, you know, what Resky called desperate leaps sometimes mm -hmm. between the lines. Yeah. I definitely, I f yeah, I have a few, po I, I have a few, po I think I even have a reference to aphorisms in my poems mm -hmm. that it is, you know, I think his work is so, he has these such like poignant lines that are just like punches and you, you sort of hear a litany of those, the pressure that those lines kind of mm -hmm. stack and build momentum. And um, I, I, it's, a lot of these poems are prose poems, which in some ways are the opposite of that. But then I have a few moments that are kind of like these aphoristic like lines that just that are very, um, you know, I think just these sort of solid thoughts that kind of come in and break up the more prose meditative stream of consciousness moments and, and sort of the tension between those two lines of thinking. Huh. And um, what would you uh, who, who would you say your biggest influences are among the foreign writers? Um, Besides Shalomans, maybe, that, that you've yeah. met. I think, well, I, I mentioned Zivig New Herbert, and I think his, his writing has really influenced. His poetry. Yeah, yeah. his poetry, um, as well as his prose. Um, I remember when I was, you know, I think I first learned of Tomas uh, Transtromer when I was a student of yours, but I think his sort of... I remember that. That was the first book I gave you when you came in on Yeah, I, it, and <laughs> I think it just blew my mind. You know, I think coming in as a student, you know, I'd read like a lot of American, you know, I'd read Emily Dickinson, I'd read Walt Whitman, and which of course they're major influences, but I had not, you know, expanded sort of into international poetry really. Um, and, you know, Thomas Tranströmer just creates these like sort of, they're, they're such little portraits of, of you know, a, a psychological state or a meditation on a landscape, but it does so much in such a like, short space that I think it sort of changed my sense of like what one can do on a on a page. Yeah, it's like looking at something from just a, a slightly different angle than what you would. Yeah, things are a little off <laughs> and there's and the tension is very quiet. You kind of have to yeah. work to find the conflict in the poem. Like what something's it it seems to be describing a beautiful landscape, but something is not <laughs> something beneath the surface is off and um, I, th I think that that's very true. It's, there's something very honest to that, that sort of way of looking at the world. Another kind of travel you did was travel as a student, basically, from Chattanooga here to Iowa. And, um, and I mean, we're all still students yeah. in a way. Um, yeah. And uh, what kind of um, changes do you see uh, have come across uh, your work as you've gone from one place to another? Um, yeah, I think, you know, the world that you're living in definitely impacts what you're writing. And, you know, when I had been, I had not left the country until I was a student at, a college student at Chattanooga. So I had lived in Tennessee my whole life and I had traveled in the States at, but had not traveled internationally. So I think that, that that sense of a bigger history than what we have, you know, 
in America is it is just immediately expansive <laughs> and um, and then tra living I lived in the Midwest for a long time and now I live in California so I can definitely see these different you know my palms are less green <laughs> than <laughs> they're very thirsty and, and they thirsty. want water <laughs> right now exactly that I'm in California yeah. <laughs> but you know just the sense of of a bigger history of the world, I think, has definitely entered my poems. What advice would you give to students here? Um, I think, you know, I think sort of being ready to expand your world is very important, and, and, and reading is sort of the first way that you can do that, and just reading anything you can, and reading everything, reading, reading the classics, reading, reading fiction, reading poetry, reading just, you know, I think reading is the most valuable lesson for a writer to have and to really sort of go outside your comfort zone and look for look for writers you love and you connect with, but then look for writers who are very different and kind of scare you and mm -hmm. um, and try to find something new that you know will challenge you as a reader is really important to always be doing. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.